A warm welcome to the basics of SharePoint. Hoping that you are a .NET developer wanting to learn SharePoint or enter into a SharePoint project. Before we move on to SharePoint, let's just consider why are you using SharePoint? First of all, there are currently millions of users for SharePoint, including you soon. And hence, there is a need for SharePoint developers or consultants or administrators to maintain SharePoint sites. And secondly, SharePoint search is much better than Google search. Thirdly, it gives you a sense of independence. Once you can develop SharePoint apps, you can start publishing them and even get money for publishing your apps. And soon we are reaching a stage where each one of us might need a SharePoint site for our personal use. What is SharePoint? It is a single secure point to store, share and search data. It is a wonderful platform from Microsoft providing lots of services with the least effort. You can create a site quickly with a single click. You can organize your content in document libraries or list, and you can do social networking for interacting with your colleagues and search for content, not even from SharePoint, even across external data sources. And you can create custom solutions or applications to automate complex business processes. SharePoint has evolved from a simple product to a highly complex network now, and it is still growing. The very definition or even the name of SharePoint changes with every new version. Coming to the versions, it started off by Jeff Tepper in 1998 for storing and organizing content. Initially, it was called Team Foundation Server in 2001. Later, Windows SharePoint Services 3.0 was released in 2003. And the later versions were 2007, most 2007. The next was SharePoint 2010. And right now, you must be using SharePoint 2013 and SharePoint 2016 preview version is also out. And also, please note that SharePoint always comes with a free product, which is called the foundation. For example, SharePoint Foundation 2013. On top of the free product is a licensed product called Enterprise or Standard. These are called the on-premise version. Now you even have the SharePoint online version, which is the cloud version of SharePoint or Office 365. Infrastructure. So initially, first we have the Windows Server. Next, on top of Windows Server, we have IIS. On top of that, you have .NET Framework ASP.NET and then SharePoint Foundation. And on top of SharePoint is installed the SharePoint server, which might be either standard or enterprise. SharePoint Online is a very easy version where you can create your online site by creating an Office 365 account. And that is called a tenant. Once you create an account, that term is called tenant. Now, as you have data types in any language, similarly in SharePoint, these are the major data types which you must be using. On the right, you see the picture shows a single server, SharePoint, where you have the database holding the content of SharePoint and a front-end server and an application server. Application server is similar to the one which is processing complex business logic, for example, search server. The front-end log, front-end server takes care of getting the web request and processing the request and displaying the request. Now, on the left side, you have the major data types. The foundation of SharePoint is called list. On the server side, you always use the term SP. On when you're working in client side, you mostly do not have the term SP. For example, you say SP list on server side and on 
client side you'll be saying list sharepoint list is the foundation which is nothing but a sql sql data or similar to a tableau structure of data with columns and rows of values SharePoint document library or SP document library is a special type of list which stores files or folders and all these data are stored inside a site called SP site or SP web. SP site, a site collection is a collection of webs which holds all the data which is virtual. And a collection of site collections is called SP Web Application. It is similar to the virtual server in your ASP document application. And the services, the collection of services are clubbed together in SP service. And everything put together, entire thing is inside the SP farm. Even the content databases of SharePoint can be accessed through SP content database. Some of the other important terms are the site columns or content types. Site columns is nothing but the columns for your list. For example, you can have a student list and you'll have the columns called name or first name, date of birth. And if those student data can, columns can be grouped together, that is called content types. For example, address can be used across various lists. Next is the site template. Suppose you are having a site only for training purposes. We can have the site template called training and that can be reused across various organizations. Site definitions defines all the basic templates, the site ownet onenetx onenet.xml, which contains all the structure for the site, which is very helpful for reusability of the site. Next is the groups and permissions. SharePoint is known for the security and it has very good features. For example, a, read, a viewer with view rights or read rights can only see the document. If you have contribute rights, you can upload documents. If you have designer rights, you can design pages for SharePoint. And there are various groups like members, visitors and owners. As an owner, you can have full contribute or full control over your site collections. And SharePoint site is nothing but a bunch of pages. So application pages are specific to SharePoint, which are posted inside the layouts folder. And site pages are like the home or default ASPX page. Let's now go to the demo. A good place to start learning SharePoint is the TechNet Virtual Labs. You log in to technet.microsoft.com slash enus slash virtual labs and choose the SharePoint course from the left. This contains wonderful self-learning tutorials and you don't need your own SharePoint server. To start with, under office you click SharePoint server, select SharePoint server. You can select any of the SharePoint courses. Let's just start off with overview of IT professional features in Microsoft SharePoint 2013. Select that. If you want to start off with app development, you can choose either provider hosted apps or deep dive into SharePoint hosted apps and start off with the tutorial given to you. Click get started. Please have your live ID or Microsoft ID ready, which can be created easily, even if you don't have one. And you may use that to launch the lab. Click sign in, then launch lab. And you're inside the SharePoint server. And this wonderful server from Contesol has various machines. This Ignite 15 SP is the server which is hosting SharePoint. And you can also log into other machines. This is the client machine which does not have SharePoint installed. So let's go into the SharePoint SP machine. And over here, first thing, let's just start off the SharePoint Central Administration. Click start and all programs. 
click Microsoft SharePoint 2013 products and click SharePoint Central 2013 Central Administration. If you are an administrator, you will be heavily working on this. If you are a developer, you might be using this in the initial phase of getting your SharePoint dev machine ready. Or you might not have access to this. Whether you are a developer or an end user or an administrator or an end user or a power user, you might want to access the site collections using the links. We will have a look at that soon. Now, in our demo, if you see the central administration has various links. You can create web applications, site collections, do a backup and restore as you see here, manage apps used in the app catalog, pre-manage the security and many, many things. Now, as a first task, task for the demo, let's create a simple site collection. Click create site collection. Let's choose the intranet.contoso.com and click change for publication and select intranet.contoso.com and give a title demo and the link as demo. Scroll down. You have the concept called templates, like what type of site you want to create. The most commonly used is team site, another is the blog. Since you are a developer, let's check developer site. You need to give the site collection administrator. For us, let it be administrator. Click OK. Ta da, your site is ready. Click OK. Launch your site from the Internet Explorer by typing intranet.contoso.com slash sites slash demo and hit enter. This is the intranet.contoso.com slash sites contoso, the home page. This is a publishing site. And Sorry, since we got the access denied error, I merely logged into a different server with the admin user. Previously, we got the admin access denied because we logged in as a different user. Now, we have entered your site which you created. So, this is a wonderful site where you can start publishing your apps and you can build your app. A very easy way to start app development is using Napa. So before we move on to Napal, you can just browse through the site to get a hang of what SharePoint is. You can go to site. This is the gear or the site actions menu. And then you click site contents, where you can view all the contents of the site. For example, you might have the announcements list, task list, and you can also create your own list. Here you have the documents where you can start uploading your documents and for it, you click files and you can upload documents and you can even create your own list if you want to host your own page you can just click site actions then create add a page that will be put under the site pages library sample and create And once your page is created, you can start adding various web parts or app parts, which are nothing but cool functionalities which can be added to your page. On the left, you see the links which is called Quick Launch in SharePoint. Click Insert. You have tons of web parts to explore under different categories like search or social and SQL Server reporting. And you have some of the cool web parts of the tag clouds, the user tasks, the site feed, the blogs. You can just play around by adding them. And as a developer, you might be developing your own app parts or web parts or app packages. You have a cool video and audio web part too. So as a summary, we saw how to log on to virtual labs, how to start 
Log on to the SharePoint admin site, then create a site collection and view the site contents. Thank you.